Have you ever wondered how sax players get that great soul gospel blues sound in their improvisations? So in this lesson, we're going to look at three techniques that will help you do just that. So let's get into it. So if you've ever tried improvising over a kind of soul gospel blues, uh, maybe you've just used the basic blues scale, then you may be a little bit disappointed in the results that you've got. And when you listen to other players doing it, there seems to be something else going on. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at three techniques that are going to help you do this a bit better. Now, if you've ever come across Cloud Vocal, they make microphones and headphones. And a lot of our members in SAT school use their products. But every year they have what's called the Cloud Vocal Sax Jam. And this year is no different. And they put out a backing track for you to record yourself on. You submit your entries and you can win some great prizes. So I thought today we could have a look at actually what they've put out there and just find some ways to make your solo even better and give you a chance of winning some great prizes while we're at it. By the way, if you want to learn more about the blues, or maybe you want to learn more about how to set up your equipment, mics and headphones in a bit more of a professional manner, then there's loads of lessons and information available at Sat School Online. Just click the link below, there's still a 14 day free trial. Now the backing track that we're going to be looking at will be available in the link below to the Cloud Vocal Sax Jam. And it's really got this great bluesy but gospely kind of vibe to it. So first of all, you may expect to just start off with a C blues scale. We're going to look at it in the tenor key which is the key of C today. And that's what generally you'd approach, you know, if you were going to do that kind of solo straight into a C blue scale. And that's not a bad place to start. However, there's something quite dark in nature about the blue scale. It's got lots of elements of the chord flattened, and particularly when it goes to the brighter chords of the progression, like chord five, the G7, it can sound a bit nondescript and a little bit heavy to some degree. So there's another blues scale that you can start off with that gives a much lighter sound. And it's actually going to be the A blues scale, which may surprise you because we're in the key of C. So if we take a C major pentatonic and an A minor pentatonic and we compare the notes in them, you'll notice they're exactly the same thing. They just have different starting notes. Now it's exactly the same with the blues scale. So if I was to play an A minor blues scale, but then play that same blues scale C to C, what I'd end up with is what's generally called the major blue scale. And you can see it's got a different formation. So the minor blue scale is one flat three, four flat five, natural five, flat seven. But the major blue scale starting on that C gives us one, two, flat three, natural three, five and six and it's just got a much lighter sound it's what you kind of hear in a lot of pop solos and the reason for this is it's got more in common with the original tonality of the piece whereas the minor blue scale has a lot of changes it has that flat three and the flat five and the flat seven even though it is already in the chord but they can sound a bit dark and minory uh, and we don't want that all the time so let's see what that sounds like applied to this progression
Now, hopefully you'll agree that that's got a really sweet bluesy sound to it. It's got that major vibe and it sounds quite poppy and light, which is great. However, maybe it's a bit too nice. So we need to darken it up a little bit and we're going to go back to where you might have originally started on a piece like this with the actual C minor blues scale. <laughs> Now I'll just do a quick solo using only this just so you can compare and contrast the lighter sound of the C major blue scale and the darker sound of the C minor blue scale. Here with that one it's much more hard hitting and kind of typical blues but it gets a bit too much after a while so the secret here is to combine the two use a bit of one use a bit of the other and just let them interact with each other so depending on your mood maybe you want a dark phrase now you want a lighter phrase or maybe you can combine them so you get somewhere in the middle so let's see what that sounds like applied to this progression So I think that sounds much better now. We've got these different colours and interactions, we've got these more diatonic sounds and we've got these classic blues flattenings, the flat threes and flat fives and flat sevens becoming a bit more prominent when we need it. So we've got contrast in that solo. So our final step today is we're going to have a look at actually an interval. So this isn't a generic approach like the other two that we can play over the whole progression. This is chord specific. And the interval we're going to look at is the interval of a sixth and in particular an ascending sixth. Now this is a really common interval in the blues and you hear guitarists and sax players and other instrumentalists that play blues using this interval all the time. The most common on a dominant chord, which is the chord that makes up the majority of blues progressions, is the sound of the third going up to the root. So on a C7 chord, for example, that would be the note E up to the note C. And that interval between E and C is a six, a flat six in this case. But it doesn't really matter what type of six it is. There's just something intrinsically bluesy about the sound. So if you want to take this a step further, you can continue moving in sixths through the related scale. So for example, C7 is basically related to an F major scale. And if we start off once again, third up to root, E up to C, we could start to move that interval of a six down. So we could go E up to C and then D up to B flat and then C up to A, etc. And we could move in different directions with that. I'll show you what that sounds like. So basically, this is a bit of blues language, if you like. I like to think of it more as a word because it's quite short and it's really usable in lots of different ways. So I'm going to play through it now, just following this idea of using six so you can see what it sounds like.
The other benefit on this particular track is there are some other dominant chords. There's the E7 dominant chord, and there's an F7 and a D7 dominant chord. And just playing, for example, the third up to the root, getting that six in on those chords, not only is a great bluesy sound, but it helps to outline the chord changes. So instead of our generic blues scale approaches, we're getting some of the changes in there as well. So if you're enjoying this kind of content, please subscribe and click the like button. It really helps. And also come along to Sat School and check out our other resources. There's everything you can imagine from blues to jazz to classical. We've got thousands of lessons for you in there and it's just one click away. Just click the link below. There's still that 14 day free trial. Now I'd really encourage you to look out for other blues words such as this and just get them in your collection. You can hear some in the backing track itself. You can hear it in the horn section lines and they're great things to just steal, transcribe and get into your playing. And you can build up all these little words that just ultimately add more to your solo and make it sound even more bluesy. So finally, let's put the whole thing together. I'm going to use a bit of the C major blue scale mixed with a bit of the C minor blue scale. And then at times I'm going to use this little blues word of the interval of a six. And let's see what that mixture sounds like. So don't forget to enter the Cloud Vocal Sax Jam competition. It's open all this month. The links are below in the description. And I'm really looking forward to listening to some of the entries and seeing if I can hear some of the techniques we've talked about today in there, in your solo. So until next time, take care and I'll see you then. Bye bye. <laughs>